uh, today we'll discuss about the one dimensional infinitely rigid box uh, you know a particle rather now this is an application of sonia wave equation uh, which is a part of uh, her uh, paper 9 uh, semester 4 physics honors so what we have considered over here is that uh, there is a potential well uh, you know and there is an infinite wall at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to l here the potential is infinity when it is less than 0 and it's more than l then it's again infinity the potential in between the wall the potential is zero okay so when the particle reaches at this wall it is reflected back into the wall into the well rather so the potential function you know can be defined as for this particular case v is equal to infinity uh, that is for x less than 0 and x is equal to x greater than l okay and similarly it will be v equal to 0 for x greater than equal to 0 and less than equal to l so this is how we can define it. the so linear equation for this particle within the box uh, <coughs> in the region in the region in, uh, between this region can be written as d square uh, psi by dx square plus 2m by h cross e psi equal to 0 so <clears throat> rather h cross square now uh, what we have taken here is that d square psi by dx square plus alpha square psi equal to 0 this is equation number 1 and here we have assumed alpha is equal to 2m e by h square under root so this is uh, alpha the general uh, solution for this particular equation can be written as psi is equal to we can write it like this psi is equal to psi equal to e e to the power i alpha x plus b into e to the power minus i in alpha x okay now uh, since the probability of finding the particle at x equal to 0 and x equal to l okay here we assume the particle the probability to find the particle at this two particular point is zero almost so we can take the boundary condition as psi as a function psi x equal to zero at x equal to zero and psi as a function of x is equal to zero at x equal to l now <clears throat> what we'll do is that uh, we'll apply this condition the equation condition number 2 and 3 uh, uh, we we'll take this one as 2 this one as 3 and this one as 4 so we'll apply 3 and 4 to 2 so that we get the value of uh, if we put this value here in equation number 2 we we'll get a plus b equal to 0 this implies b equal to minus a similarly for the second condition we'll apply the second second condition we we'll get a e okay uh to the power i alpha l plus b e minus i alpha l equal to 0 Okay. Now we know that b is equal to minus a from the previous one. So we can substitute the value of b over here to get 2 i a sine alpha a equal to zero. Here we have converted this exponential form into the trigonometric function. Now since a is not equal to zero, okay, it follows that here a is not equal to zero. This implies sine alpha a will be equal to zero. Therefore, alpha l must be equal to And pi. This is a general equation. Where is an integer? Also, <coughs> we can write psi equal to a e i alpha x plus b e minus i alpha x. Okay. Again, putting the value of b over there, we'll write a in the place of b. Since b is equal to minus a, we'll write b a to the power i alpha x. Okay. Minus to the power minus i alpha x. Again, uh, solving this, we we'll get two i a sine alpha x. Okay. Or what we can do is that we can write this other function as psi x equal to a dash. Okay, sine alpha x, where a dash is two i a. So psi as a function of x equal to a dash sine. Sine in the place of alpha, we substitute the value and pi by l. So sine m and pi by l into x. Now <coughs> finding out the eigen value, eigen value of energy. Okay, 
we know that alpha is n by l which is also equal to under root 2 m e by h cross square so solving this we will get e n okay rather e um, you know e n is equal to n square h square by 8 m l square okay so uh, this is what you will get from here okay now <coughs> Here the value of n could be 1, 2, 3, it's an integer. Now the thing is that n is equal to 0 is not allowed here. This is not allowed, right? Because it will make psi x equal to 0. And what we can say that uh, the particle, uh, you know, uh, everywhere in the box, okay, which means the particle is not present at all. Okay, so... Um, um, uh, this n is equal to 0 also means that the particle cannot have 0 energy. So, according to classical mechanics, all values of energy including 0 are possible. But uh, as far as the quantum mechanic is concerned, uh, the particle cannot have an arbitrary energy, but it can take only discrete value. Okay. Now, thus the, uh, the lowest energy value will be for n equal to 1. So, it will be like E1 equal to x square by 8 ml square. Okay. So, this is the Previously, we have equation number 4, so let this be equation number 5 and this will be equation number 6. Now, what we can say is that uh, if you just focus this two equation, we have, uh, if you put here E2, E2 will have 4 h square by 8 ml square, so it will be 4 E1. Similarly, E3 will be equal to 9 E1 and E4 is equal to 16 E1. Okay, so what does it mean? It simply means that these, these are basically the excited energy level and what we can say is that uh, the energy levels are not equally spaced but the separation between energy level increases with increase in value of N that has been already been depicted uh, that we have already uh, we can see from here also. Now uh, as far as uh, eigenfunction is concerned, you know, we take talk about wave function. Okay. Now the constant a prime here, what we take in a prime. Now, an equation number, say whatever may be the, can be found from the condition of normalization. Okay. Now the probability of finding the particle within the region x is equal to zero and less than l. Okay. So uh, x greater than zero and x less than l. The probability of finding between uh, uh, the particle between this limit is one. So what we can do is that we follow the condition of normalization zero to l. Okay, and then we'll write sine psi uh, an x into psi an asterisk x dx equal to zero, or rather, in fact, one. So it's a condition of normalization. So we put the value of psi x and psi asterisk x uh, in the above equation, and the, so we we'll get a prime square, a prime square is zero to l sine square n pi x by l dx equal to 1. So what we can say from here is that it's like a prime square l by 2 equal to 1. So a prime will be equal to under root 2 by l. Hence the normalized wave function will be uh, psi n x is equal to this is a normalized wave function under root 2 by l sine n uh, n by x by l okay so here n function psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 corresponding to the value n equal to 1 2 3 it can be shown in the figure also what we can do is that we can draw it over here and you can show it that so between x equal to 0 and x equal to l we have taken it like x equal to 0 and x equal to l now in this particular condition there are two nodes at x uh, so so if we'll take uh, you know uh, nodes we'll talk about this one so there will be two nodes at x equal to, x equal to 0 and x equal to l for a wave function say psi 1 similarly and this is for n equal to 1 similarly if we'll take uh, n equal to 2 so we'll have two you know rather three anti nodes nodes rather like this uh, this is for psi 2 and this is for n equal to 2 so again for n equal to 3 you keep on changing the value and you get something like this so this is 
side 3 okay and here it's x equal to 0 and x equal to 1 obviously now if we'll talk about the plugin we'll talk about uh, slightly about the probability density related to the same uh, topic probability density we can write px dx equal to psi n square dx substituting this value over here we can write 2 by l sin square n pi x by l dx so probability density can be written as like this okay p x equal so this will be the probability density p x equal to 2 by l sin square n pi x by l so it will be maximum this p x will be maximum when n pi x this n pi x by l must be equal to must be the multiple of pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 or 5 pi by 2 okay so you know for n equal to 1 that is a lower energy state okay for lower energy state if you substitute the value over there uh, solving this one we get the value of x so, so x will be equal to say l by 2 pi uh, 3l by 2 pi 5l by 2 pi and so on for the 2 n in fact this is the n extremely sorry now for n equal to 1 x will be equal to l by 2 so in this in this particular case we we'll draw the particle is most likely found in the middle of the box because psi that is psi 1 square is maximum there so for n equal to 1 you can just show it like this okay so this is x equal to 0 x is equal to l and here it is x so this one is the mod of psi square psi 1 square say so x is equal to l by 2 so it's just in the middle the probability will be maximum so <clears throat> for n equal to say a 2 we we'll substitute the value 2 we will get l by 4 and 3 l by 4 so now we can have two point where the probability of finding the particle will be maximum that is l by 4 and 3 l by 4 so this is side 2 square so this must be l by 4 and this must be 3 l by 4 here this is l by 2 again if you put n equal to 3 if you put n equal to 3 over here we will get l by 6 3 l by 6 and 5 l by 6 you can't go beyond that because if you put again uh, say uh, if you go beyond that you will get the value which is really more than l so our boundary is up to l so uh, in this particular case you will have the probability the maximum probability of finding the value over here i mean the probability is like l by uh, 6 this will be most probably 3 l by 6 and this will be 5 l by 6 so this is your psi 3 square okay so this is something related to the topic which we are going to whether is one dimensional particle in one dimensional infinitely rigid box so this is the end of this topic as far as the syllabus is concerned we will continue with the another topic of the next lecture uh, if you find it to be very very useful then please subscribe thank you